This is Monday Matt's story. This is from uh, April 21st, 2013. Okay. Um, just to just to give you, a, again, talk about some things we were looking at here. Talking about age of consent in 2012. Talking about buying little sister's underwear in 2012. Talking about semen eating in 2012. So, uh, was he talking about horse masturbation at the time? Talking about horse masturbation in 2012. Okay. So, we've got all this going on. We've, we've got age of consent conversations, horses getting jacked off, My Little Pony masturbation, semen tasting. It's all there. And it's all in 2012. So, let's hear his story about why I was kicked out of church at the age of 15. I'm sure it's a, a traumatic event. I'm sure it's completely real and not at all been altered because it's even more embarrassing. Let's see. Hey, all you guys out there. So this video is about how I was kicked out of church at the age of 15 for not having sex with a 13-year-old. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday in a video. Let's just uh, take a minute to really, to, to really savor the flavor of that fucking statement. He was kicked out of... Okay. <laughs> okay. He was kicked out of church because he wouldn't fuck a younger girl. So he's saying at the age of 15, he was thrown out of church because he wouldn't fuck a 13-year-old. Now, I may not be the most deeply religious person on earth. I mean, I'm sure people like Nick Fuentes is much more dedicated in his Catholicism than I ever was in my uh, being Protestant. And I'm sure there are a lot of you out there uh, that are they're even more deeply than Nick. But I, I really don't seem to remember many church doctrines relating to you better fuck these young girls in our church or we're going to throw you out the door. Maybe I misheard him. Maybe we're mishearing this conversation. Let's just back that up a second, see if we accidentally misheard this. Kicked out of church at the age of 15 for not having sex with a 13-year-old. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday in a video response to, uh, to Repsian. He actually was like, what? I want to know more. As well as other people are like, what the fuck? That would be Mr. Repsion. Uh, the guy that likes to sell his socks and underwear to people online because nobody watches his videos anymore. It's weird, right? It's like a, it's a, it's a callback. You know, it's a little bit of foreshadowing. I mean, here's Mundane Matt uh, talking to Repsion, who's gone downhill and now sells his dirty undergarments to people for nickels so he doesn't have to live on the streets. And now Mundane Matt is talking about his conversation with Repsion as Mundane Matt is probably going to be living in a gutter soon as his metrics go down through the floor. Funny story. Let me take you back to uh, the mid-90s, mid to late 90s, 1997 to be exact. I was 15 years old, living in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, going to church at a Calvary Chapel, which is why the background image on this video is of Calvary Chapel. Uh, I was there with my friends. They got me involved in the church. I was going four nights a week. I was having a ball, loving it, you know, very much into God, into the whole idea of salvation, redemption. Now, I like the fact that he named the church. So this can be confirmed. If anybody wants to take the fucking time to do it, all they've got to do is call Calvary Chapel and say, hey, one of your former parishioners told me I can't be a member of your church unless I fuck little girls. Is that, is that an accurate statement? <laughs> is that an accurate statement? Do I have to fuck children in your congregation to be able to worship here? Because that's what this internet video told me. I'm shin finding my savior. Yada, yada, yada. And anyway, so my buddy and I were at that age, you know, we're kind of competing over girls and everything. And uh, there was a girl there. Her name was Sonia. Sonia was 13. We were 15. She was on the cusp of being 14. So it wasn't like a huge, disgusting age difference. But that's not the point. The point is both of us kind of dug her. You know, she was very, I want to say th this was 16 years ago. So it's I'm trying to exactly remember who she, how she was. But she was very open about certain aspects of her life and she was coming into her own sexuality and as a result was interested in experimentation and things like that well all that i don't know how to put this she was very open about her sexuality and coming into it i just i'm not even saying matt is doing anything weird or underhanded but god it looks bad doesn't it when you put the tweets together with the videos it doesn't look very good matt I was thrown out of church because I wasn't plugging a 13-year-old. It's a story I think we've all can relate to. Bullshit aside, she worked in the nursery of the, or the daycare of the church. Now, keep in mind that this church was like based... Matt, is that why you were interested in her? She was the gatekeeper to the younger ones. <laughs> basically, 
in like a children's daycare center that on this weekends it became a church and on weeknights became a church. Um, and so she was working there. So she very much wanted to have a child, right? She's getting her hormones in. She's feeling, you know, I'm pretty sure she just got her period, all that kind of shit. So she comes to me one night and she was like, Monday met. I want to have a baby and I want you to be the father. And I'm going like, what? Monday, Matt, I want you to blow your boulders right up my couch. Monday, Matt, I want you to mine my quarry. I want you to dig right in there in the dirt, Matt. And I want you to find some deep deposits within me. I need your baby, Monday, Matt. I've watched your YouTube videos, Odin, and it gets me fucking horny. Put your baby in me, Matt. No, you don't. I mean, you could suck my dick. No, okay, I can't say that. But no, I was like, shocked i was very shocked i had no idea about any of this i'm like yeah he, i don't want to be a dad i mean here it is 16 years later i'm still saying the same thing to my current girlfriend you know i didn't want to be a dad and i told her i'm like look i don't want to be a dad you don't want to you don't want a kid you're, you're you're 13 you know you're almost 14 you don't want to have a kid you maybe want an infant to carry around and play with but you don't want like a two-year-old you don't want a toddler you don't want a little kid you don't want a teenager you don't want an adult you just want a baby Right, because she's at that age. I'm like, just go work more in the nursery. You're cool. Because you're at that age, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's the age, Matt. I don't know if uh, uh, these young girls that are uh, just starting their period, as you seem to have that information readily available, I don't know if they're suddenly, instantly, desperately wanting a YouTuber's baby inside of them. I also, <laughs> I like, I like how he puts his fucking username in there into the story like it was casually dropped like she's like god i'm so fucking horny for you mundane matt of the mundane matt show put your babies inside me that's a conversation i'm sure everybody has and she took like serious offense to this now here's how all of this plays out to the church because her family used to be jehovah's witnesses and the pastor of the church personally personally recruited them or converted them or indoctrinated them into the Calvary Chapel faith. He found them, met with them, conversed with them, and brought them into the fold. They were like his pet project. And as a result of that, he they had the ear of him because he was very intent on making them. Can somebody that can draw, for the love of God, can you make a picture of this for me? I would be in your debt forever if you could. I want you to draw some dude that looks like Moses, just standing with his arms outstretched, and he's got a staff in one fucking hand. And on the ground is, like, some little girl. And she's, like, she's praying. You've got the sunlight coming down on her. It's all very angelic. And there stands Monday Matt in the foreground, hands on his hip, with a shirt that just says soy boy, and a big bag of boulders next to him. And the guy that looks like Moses, the Jehovah's Witness, super priest, or whatever the fuck he's trying to say it is, is like, put a baby in her, Matt. Give us, give us our, give us our new Messiah. Our mundane messiah. Accepted in the church, and they were a weird fucking family. But then again, you have to be a weird fucking family in order to be part of the Jehovah's Witness faith. I mean, come on, you don't celebrate birthdays, Christmas, holidays, anything? It's just like a really kind of droll existence. You know, it's like being on Twitter without ever swearing. It's, Fuck that shit. But anyway, point remains. Sonya took offense. And this is when I first learned that women can be evil. Because she started twisting so many things against me. I was going... Oh, here we go. Here we go. I like how he tries that men going their own way tactic. Like, that's that's how he's trying. He's trying to appeal to that group. Like, dude, girls are icky, right, my guys? Let me tell you the twisted shit this bitch said. So let's hear the real story, Matt. Going in there, you know, helping out, volunteering, really into the church. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing rumors from people saying that I attacked her, not like, you know, like, like physically beat her up or nothing, but like there was a, a sh little strip mall next to the church and a lot of us would go out there and hang out and smoke cigarettes afterward. And she would be over there and she told me one time, she told, sorry, she told someone that I had gone back there with her after Sunday school and I'd put a knife to her throat and I told <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, we're go we're backing the fuck up on this one. 
let's just this back a let's back a little bit up. We can call this church. We can call this fucking chapel. We can find this girl and hear this story. Okay, let's just. I need to make sure I heard that right. That I attacked her, not like you know, like like physically beat her up or nothing, but like there was a, a little strip mall next to the church, and a lot of us would go out there and hang out and smoke cigarettes afterward. And she would be over there, and she told me one time, she told sorry, she told someone that I had gone back there with her after Sunday school, and I'd put a knife to her throat, and I told her that if she didn't kiss me, I was going to slice her throat. And that never happened. That I never did that, right? But that did happen to her. She told me that story like a while back. She told me that there was a guy that she had known from her neighborhood who wanted her to... Has Nick the Knife been dethroned? Has the Quarry King taken Nick Fuentes' title away from him? I mean, Nick likes to show the blade off when he's getting into a heated debate. But I don't know if he's going around Sunday schools, pulling out teenage girls, <laughs> and holding them against the wall and saying, Bitch... If you don't give me a kiss right now, I'm going to fucking end you. <laughs> what the fuck is this story? You know, make out with him, and so he put a knife to her throat and, like, forced her to do it. So she used that story against me, and that, like, started getting really kind of weird. And then she was telling people that I was going around um, and harassing her brothers, her younger brothers, by, like, throwing chairs at them and, like, hitting them with things and trying to beat them up and trying to hurt them. And, of course, she said this when, like, no one else was around, so I had no way of backing it up. And her little brothers, because they wanted to help her sister, were claiming that I did that stuff as well. So it's not just the girl that said that Monday and Matt held a knife, held her at knife point and demanded smooches. Her fucking little brothers are saying, yeah, that crazy son of a bitch Monday and Matt from the Monday and Matt show on YouTube uh, tried, to, tried, to, <laughs> tried to, I guess, gang rape our sister behind a fucking church. And then when we told him, that's a bad idea, he started throwing chairs at our fucking head like it was a wrestling show. I wonder how many rocks he hucked at them. And then the kicker was, like, her dad went to the pastor and was like, well, now Monday and Matt is calling my house at 2 o'clock in the morning and cussing me out. Okay, that did happen. I Okay, you know, what the fuck? All right, so I didn't, I didn't attack her with a knife, and I didn't assault her little brothers, but I was calling her house at 2 in the morning. <laughs> that did happen. Sounding a little stalkerish, Matt. Let's let's uh, you know maybe I'm jumping ahead a little bit too much, and we'll we'll get to the. I see some super chats piling up. We'll we'll read them at the end of this. We've got a few more minutes to go, but let's let's hear where this goes. I did not do it, and the story with that was, uh, my friend and I were hanging out with some other friends. It was like two o'clock in the morning. We were drinking, and we were like, I wonder what son is up to right now. Yeah, he should call her. Maybe you know, like what's that? So my buddy picks up the phone and he dials dials our house. It's like, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning. And the dad answers and he's just like, yeah, hello. And he's like, uh, Sonia there? And uh, the dad's like, she's asleep. She hangs the phone and shit, right? Whatever. So then the other friend we were there picks up the phone, hits redial. Dad answers it and he just goes, fuck you, you motherfucker, piece of shit, asshole. Click, hangs up the phone. That's it. Stupid 15-year-old shit. No big deal. No big deal. Hey, dude, I know your daughter's telling you these crazy stories that I'm holding her at knife point, and your little sons are telling you that I've attacked them with chairs, but just relax. I mean, sure, I'm calling your house at 2 in the morning drunk and screaming fuck you at you. Or, I'm sorry, uh, friends are doing that, uh, quote-unquote, at 2 in the morning. And, uh, you know, just, just the average, everyday teenage stuff. I mean, I think we've all been there, right? We've all been teenagers, right, guys? You know, holding chicks at knife point, beating up their little brothers, calling their fucking house at 2 in the morning drunkenly, upset and screaming fuck you at them just average everyday things is this have we stumbled into a mundane version of me too is that what we are is this hashtag mundane me too no big fucking deal but she i was there i didn't participate but i was blamed for all of that so here it is I, they're saying like wait a minute wait no back that up matt I, i'm sorry to keep interrupting right I, I want to hear this glorious story to its uh to its conclusion but what do you mean you got blamed for it, but you didn't have any hand in that. You just started the story by saying you called. Your friend did it the second time. You said your friend redialed, but you said you called. But now, five seconds later, in your own fucking story, you didn't have a hand in it. You're completely innocent. You're a good boy. Didn't do nothing. Just need money for them church programs. Or for a new knife to hold up the parishioner's daughters. Like, almost sexual assault. 
uh, threats of physical violence, attacks on people, nothing of which had any witnesses outside of her, but because they were so close to the pastor, and the pastor knew me. Like I said, I've gone to that church for two years. I was there all the time. I was really digging it. And I didn't, you know, basically at that point, he was like, we need you to not come back. Because. Uh, <clears throat> okay. He was thrown out of a church. He, he was thrown out of a church, not because he refused to have sex with a 13 year old. He was thrown out of a church by the fucking pastor, by the pastor of the church. And he'd been a member there for two years because the pastor of the church started hearing stories about him holding up little girls at knife point, attacking fucking little boys, and drunkenly calling people's houses at two in the morning. I, the pastor of the church threw your ass out of that church, Matt, because he was afraid you were going to Allah Akbar in the middle of a Sunday sermon. That's why you got thrown out of the fucking church, champ. Because you were a disruption, you were a distraction, and you were causing too many problems. And I just, like, looked at him, like, what? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you at, I mean, like, really? And at that point in time, like, I was 15, you know, and I was just trying to figure it all out and shit. And I'm not a bad person. I may talk like a lot of crap, but I'm not a bad person. I would never do anything like that to anyone, ever. Yeah, he was just totally in a bad headspace, okay? A lot of stress going on, uh, even though this was 16 years ago, according to him. Uh, there was this guy called Dementoed Pesos. And uh, he had a, a local cable show, and all it did was pick on Matt, and Matt just couldn't handle it. And he couldn't flag it because it was just the local cable channel. So, he, you know, they gave him a bad headspace, really fucked him up, so he started holding people up at knife point. You know how it is. And yet, here I am being accused, and I have absolutely no way of backing my claim, no way of proving my innocence. And the entire congregation was looking at me like I'm some sexual deviant or degenerate. And that's just not who I am. This motherfucker is telling a story where the entire congregation of a church and the fucking pastor ask him to leave. That is pretty phenomenal, Matt. That's pretty fucking extraordinary to have an entire church know about what you've done to the point that they're asking you to fuck off. That <laughs> the entire Calvary Chapel and the fucking pastor have asked you to leave. So I said, okay, this is how you want to play. If this is what God wants for me, then I'm done. I'm gone. And I left, and 16 years later, I've never gone back to church. Anyone who tries to talk to me into going to one of their congregations, I basically tell them to go suck a gigantic, fat, hanging, AIDS-infested cock, swallow the load, and smile. Um, it's deeply offended me as a person because... This is when you find out. This is why I've been so... One of the reasons why I will support the underdog more often than not. If, if, if something is there, I will back them because you know there's always another side of the story because people like to make shit up and they like to believe what they want to believe and they like to push whatever efforts they can to back their own claims of being righteous. And in the sense of this case, Sonia was mad at me because I didn't want to fucking fill her belly with my seed and... Uh, you know, I'm going to back that up. I, I just want to hear him actually say that with a straight face one more time. And to back their own claims of being righteous. And in the sense of this case, Sonia was mad at me because I didn't want to fucking fill her belly with my seed. And she basically got me kicked out of a community that I had spent two years heavily involved with that were friends and people that were very close to me and people that I have not spoken to since because I was basically ostracized for taking the high road and not being a sexual degenerate. Never mind the fact that I didn't want kids. Yeah, Matt was taking the high road, guys. He's not a sexual degenerate. I don't know where you're getting this idea that Monday Matt is a sexual degenerate. Okay, he's taking the high road. Why would you think Monday Matt is a fucking deviant? What would possibly convince you that Monday Matt is a sexual degenerate? He's taking the high road. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. Perfectly well-adjusted person. Fucking hell. So now you know. And according to G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. So yeah. Welcome to my life. 
it's been fun. Holy fucking shit. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, I heard the, the video existed. And people were telling me, like, oh, hey, you know, it's um, a weird story. It's a bullshit story, but I wouldn't fuck a 13-year-old. A little bit more to that. Tiny bit more to that than uh, what I had been told. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, so to recap, uh, you know, the bits of the story we heard, Monday Matt was thrown out of a church as a teenager by the entire congregation and the pastoral staff because a girl accused him of basically trying to rape her at knife point behind an abandoned building. And then uh, when she got away, he assaulted her brothers with chairs. This is her claim. And um, finally, I guess in a fit of drunken rage, started calling her house at like two and three in the morning repeatedly. But, you know, there's a little, there's a, <laughs> there's a little argument even between himself about that. Uh, and so, you know, he fights for the underdog guys. Okay, this is a freedom fighter. The Boulder King, or, I'm sorry, uh, Boulder Boy, the Quarry King, is a fucking freedom fighter. <laughs>